Hey, hey everyone, and most importantly, Deluxe Man, Big Daddy. You know, I watched Big Daddy's video earlier uh, today or yesterday. By the time you watch this, basically asking the question: of Should be should we be excited for WrestleMania? And I, for one, can kind of understand exactly what Shilek like Daddy's talking about, and the same with the Lex Man. You know, should, is there anything really to be excited about this year's WrestleMania? And when one thinks about it, there's a lot of reasons why people would say it, there's not really much to be excited about. You know, they could say it's the matchups itself. They could say it's the way the event's being hyped up. They can say basically it's the build all the way around. They can even say it's the fact that you don't know what's going to happen with one of your main event players. But when I look at WrestleMania, I don't think it's just all of that. I think it's one other reason. I look at it as being the fact that unlike last year and some years previously, this year's WrestleMania is literally taking place a month after Fastlane. And the reason there's a problem with that, possibly in the eyes of some in my opinion, is because usually with WrestleMania, we get about a whole month off of pay-per-views, which allows the WWE on Raw and SmackDown to build up to that big event, build up to the event, which is WrestleMania. It gives them enough time to hype up the matches even if they're matches we don't want to see and make them feel important. It gives us enough time to know who's going to be entertainment-wise performing at WrestleMania. You know, it gives us all those options. It gives us all those options. Or it gives the WWE all those options. And the fans, in a sense, know this. Fans know this, but... But again, here's the real reason why, in my opinion, WrestleMania 31 is not being looked at with excitement. It's the fact, it's because of the fact that it, the WWE is not allowing themselves and the fans a month off to build to the event. You know, instead, it feels like we're going right into another pay-per-view a month later. I mean, last year, when you take a look at WrestleMania, WrestleMania took place, believe it or not. WrestleMania took place on the first Sunday of the year. Now, ironically, I could kind of un now ironically, this year it's taking place on the last Sunday of March. Now, I'm not saying this hasn't happened before. WrestleMania has had the programs, has the has has had the pay-per-views, the WrestleManias, if you will. They've had those shows sometimes at the end, in the middle, or on the second to last week of of March. I'm not denying that. But lately, over the past few years, WrestleMania has been viewed as something that does happen sometimes at the end of March, but mostly will happen on the first day in April. Basically, what happened on the day of baseball's opening night, of the MLB's opening night. That's when it would happen. And obviously, it's not happening here. And I think that kind of disappoints a lot of fans. Because like I said, usually the WWE allows themselves almost a month, maybe two, basically almost five to six weeks at the most, maybe seven at the most, to build up to WrestleMania. Usually when they have a pay-per-view in February, it's in the middle of February. It's not the second to last Sunday of the month. It's like the third to last Sunday of the month. And once that's done, then they give themselves time to go to Mania. Now, I know that sounds kind of strange, but it's the truth. Usually they give four, five, six, seven weeks at most, five probably the more realistic-wise, maybe even six, and that gives them enough time to build to Mania. Here, you're looking at basically four weeks, and that's it. Four weeks to Mania, and that's it. Nothing else. Which is why some fans feel it's not much to look forward to because you're pretty much treating it like a regular pay-per-view. You're not building it up as, 
as, as the as the pay per view, as your Super Bowl, as your NBA Finals, as your Olympics of wrestling. You're you're not doing that. Instead, what you're doing is treating it like another pay per view, and as Schleg Daddy and De- Lex Men will both agree on, you're throwing it under the bus. I mean. Hold on. It's around here somewhere. In fact, I see it right here. This, last year's WrestleMania was on the 6th. It gave us a month. So, it, it seems obviously, and one fan asked, Jeff in his Facebook Friday page, or Facebook Friday question, is it, does it seem kind of odd that the even <laughs> even numbers seem to be the even numbered WrestleManias seem more of a successful than the odd numbers? It's kind of weird, right? But I think it's not just that. It's not just that either, Jeff. Probably not just that either, but the point is, last year's WrestleMania, yeah, it was the 30th anniversary. It succeeded because it had enough time to build to where it was. It did. It had enough time to build towards it. You know, as ridiculous as Cena and Wyatt was, and some in the eyes of some, there was story, and that continued for a couple of months afterwards. You know, there was reasoning behind a lot of these events that took place at WrestleMania. And thus, the reason not many people crap on WrestleMania 30 is because you had enough time to build towards WrestleMania 30. You had enough time and effort put behind it, thus you're telling people, this is a WrestleMania you got to see. Yes, the 30th anniversary, but look, what, look at what they were able to accomplish. The point is, they gave themselves enough time. Here, they're not doing that. And that's what pretty much pisses a lot of fans off. And I think, in a sense, that's what devalues the importance of WrestleMania. And why, as you put it, Jeff, and you put it, Alex, why not a lot of people are looking forward to WrestleMania this year? They're not looking forward to it. They're not excited about it because there's not enough build. They're basically giving us a four-week deal before Mania instead of giving us that traditional five- to six-week deal. You know, you're not really putting any importance behind it. And, you know, you talk about the matches as well. Now, some of the matches might surprise us. Let's not deny that. Let's not deny that the matches will not surprise us because, you know what, it may be a, a very forgettable show in the eyes of some. Maybe a, show that, maybe a show that's thrown under the bus for the following year's WrestleMania. But the fact is, you know, there will probably be matches that we will talk about, but they will be the only things we remember. Everything else will be forgettable. So there might be some things that surprise us, but the thing is, even if we do get surprised, even if, even if what we're looking at as WrestleMania right now succeeds our expectations and surprises us, we're still going to look at it from a uh, pub- publicity, public, and hyped standpoint as being a very disappointed WrestleMania, more along the lines of not being built properly. Yeah, the matches might be good, but what what are good matches if the event they take place on is not built up properly, if it's not given the treatment that it deserves? And I think, in a sense, you know, the matches might be accountable for that, But I think in the long run, it's also the fact that the event is taking place four weeks after, four weeks after what many people considered a glorified three-hour-plus 
$9.99 or $49.95, $59.95 Monday Night Raw, which was Fastlane. They pretty much felt it was glorified. They didn't like it. That's all it was. So basically, you're setting up your scheduling mania four weeks after a glorified Raw. And I think that's what disappoints people. Because usually with the Elimination Chamber, you would be given something exciting. You'd be given something that, okay, some of the matches may suck, but the Chamber match in itself would at least get you talking and get you excited for the fact that that Chamber or that, that Chamber match or those Chamber matches had a significance for happening. They would have an impact on what would happen at Mania. There was a reasoning for it. Fastlane, in the eyes of some, didn't have that reasoning. Yeah, you had Daniel Bryan, Roman Reigns. Whoopee, right? Good match. Don't den no, no denying that. But the thing is, it didn't have that appeal that something like the Chamber did. And I think that's what pisses people off. It pisses them off. The, what the pay-per-view or the special event that you got uh, going into that takes place a month, a month before Mania, before your big Super Bowl event, was nothing more, more than a glorified Raw. And I think to add to the disappointment and the unhypedness and the not looking forward uh, situation when it comes to Mania, is a lot of people, and Jeff, Alex, you guys might agree with this, is the fact that they're afraid that just like with Fastlane, WrestleMania is going to be another overhyped, glorified Monday Night Raw that goes for four hours. That's, all, that's what they're afraid of, and that's why they're not looking forward to it. That this is nothing more than going to be a four-hour glorified Raw, and that's it. That's why not a lot of people are looking forward to it. It's also the fact that, like I said, it's coming way too soon. You don't have that extra week or extra two weeks to build towards it. You're basically saying, okay, we've had Fastlane, our glorified Raw. Now, four weeks later, here we go to Mania. I mean, they said it on Monday Night Raw. We are 20-something days away. Usually around this time of year, and many fans have gotten accustomed to this, we're usually told, oh, we're 30-something days away, or we're 35 or 32. Not 20. Not 27 or 26. It's like, what is the point, point of hyping up mania if you're saying, oh, by the way, we're less than a month away? Again, I can understand that that being the main reason, and also the fear that it's going to be nothing more than a four-hour glorified Monday Night Raw. That's what fans fear. That's why fans like 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 you, Jeff, like you, Alex, and like many others, are not looking forward to this. I mean, yeah, they'll watch Mania. Like some people, I'll order Mania because I don't want to have any issues with the network streaming, even if the PS4 works great, I don't want to have no issues. And I know that the same could be said for you and you. You guys know that. But the fact is, the fact is, the reason people are disappointed, whether they're not excited, is not just because of the matches that are being hyped up and being put on this card. It's the fact that it's not being given the proper time to be built up like last year's and the years before was. It's not. Instead, we're getting a, instead, we're getting a WrestleMania that takes place not even four weeks after a glorified Raw, which pretty much puts fear in the eyes of the fans, thinking they're going to see nothing more than a four-hour glorified Monday Night Raw in the disguise of a WrestleMania. And they're not looking forward to that. And as far as the matches go, that even worries them more so. That worries them more so because some of the matches, like I said, they might surprise us and be good, but they're not the matches they want. You take someone like Daniel Bryan, you even said this, Jeff, and Deluxe Man, you would agree. You took someone like Daniel Bryan, who is your most over guy in the WWE, and you're putting him in the Intercontinental Championship ladder match. Thus, in a sense, by putting your most over guy there, the guy that won the world title at WrestleMania last year and had everybody, the whole world, the whole nation behind him, has had college campuses at college basketball and football games chanting yes, had inspired Hunter Pence of the San Francisco freaking Giants 
to do the yes chant and even be there for the parade. You're putting him in a glorified ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. All you're doing, in a sense, all the WWE is doing, in a sense, is by putting Daniel Bryan in a situation that obviously he could end up winning and becoming an Intercontinental Champion, along with the Cena Rusev rematch for the United States Championship. All you're doing, all the WWE is doing, in a sense, is they're going to, yeah, they're going to try to put more prestige and importance back in those championships. But guess what? You're going to make those championships seem more important than the WWE World Title, which is going to probably be won by Roman Reigns or successfully retained by Brock Lesnar, only 